Welcome to the Willow Creek Online Training Program. Today we're going to go over another module on risks of the Wasatch. This is number four and it concerns storms. The purpose of this module is to discuss the various risks associated with living along the Wasatch Front. In this module we will discuss weather risk or storms. The majority of this information was taken from the Utah Natural Hazards Handbook 2008 and as I mentioned before you can download this whole report from the website if you desire to learn more. All right, weather risk. Dozens of Americans die each year due to exposure to cold. Add to that vehicle accidents and related fatalities plus billions of dollars in economic losses and it is clear that winter weather is a significant threat. I mean if you look at all the things and all the reasons people die in Utah, I don't doubt that uh, this weather thing is, is the biggest hitter, but uh, I think I have a paragraph on that in a little bit. Weather winter certainly takes an economic toll on communities. Snow removal costs exceed $2 billion per year for the U.S. Flight delays cost U.S. carriers $3.2 billion annually. So it's pretty serious stuff, it really is. Be prepared in winter weather by having the following at home and at work. Flashlight and extra batteries, battery-powered NOAA weather radio, all-hazards receiver, portable radio, there it is there. Those don't cost much at all. Uh, extra food and water, extra medicine and baby items, first aid supplies, heating fuel, emergency heating source, uh, fire extinguisher and smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. And we'll go over some of these in greater detail later, but this is just kind of more of a summary module. Winter storm driving conditions, I'm sure we've all been uh, possibly in an accident or definitely some close calls when we drive in the winter. So, things to consider. Fully check and winterize your vehicle, that's number one, you want some reliability there. Keep your gas tank near full. Carry a cell phone and let someone know your itinerary. Carry a winter storm survival kit, which uh, should include or may include Blankets, sleeping bags, flashlight, first aid kit, knife, non-perishable food, extra clothing, a large empty can of plastic and plastic cover with tissue and paper towels for sanitary purposes, and a smaller can and waterproof matches to melt snow for drinking water. So there's some uh, suggestions for you right there. And uh, continuing on with that, uh, also sand, shovel, windshield scraper, tool kit, tow, tow rope, booster cables, water container, and road maps. Hopefully you have a big enough trunk for all that. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. A lot of these things are rather small items. And if you've ever been stuck in the snow, then you know, you realize these things would come in handy. Remain alert for a sudden road condition changes. So you have to be very attentive, of course, when you drive in winter storms. Remember, bridges and overpasses often become icy first. You know, inside the earth it generates heat and it comes up through the ground, but overpasses aren't touching the ground. So they'll always freeze first. They're very dangerous uh, and if you don't know that, you could get yourself in trouble very quickly. Snow and blowing snow can produce sudden restrictions in visibility. We all know that. When caught in a winter storm in a building, so now we move from the car and now we're in a building. Remember, stay inside when using alternative heat from a fireplace, wood stove, space heater, etc. Use fire safeguards and ventilate properly. You don't want to save yourself from the storm and then die from uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, I think is what they're getting at there. If you have no heat, close off unneeded rooms. Okay? Stuff towels or rags and cracks under doors and cover windows at night. So, you know, it's possible if there was an earthquake, you know, maybe it broke all the gas lines, etc. I think that's what they're talking about there. So it gives you some good ideas on how to respond. Once again, when we're in a building, eat and drink. All right, I'm okay with that. Food provides the body with energy for producing its own heat. So that's why it's important. Keep the body replenished with fluids to prevent dehydration. Wear layers of loose clothing Lightweight, warm clothing. There you go. Now, when caught in a winter storm in a vehicle. 
So now we went from the building to the vehicle. Stay in your vehicle. Disorientation occurs quickly in wind-driven snow and cold. I can attest to that. Okay. Run the motor about 10 minutes each hour for heat. Okay. It's a good rule. 10 minutes each hour for heat. To avoid carbon monoxide poisoning, open the window a little for fresh air and quickly make sure the exhaust pipe is not blocked. Once again, protecting ourselves from that silent killer that we call carbon monoxide. Remember, you can't smell it, you can't see it, uh, but it will kill you, so you have to be careful there. Once again, when you're in a vehicle, make sure yourself visible to rescuers. Turn on your dome light at night when running the engine. You don't want to run your battery down. Uh, tie colored clothes, preferably red, to your antenna and door handles and raise the hood to indicate trouble after the snow stops falling, that is. Okay? So those are some wonderful suggestions if you ever get... You hear of too many people leaving their vehicle, going out in the woods, and it's much harder to find them at that point. When they come looking for you, they usually go along the roads in hopes that you would stay with your vehicle. Exercise from time to time by vigorously moving arms, legs, fingers, and toes to keep blood circulating and to keep warm. All right, now you're caught outside. Okay, that's, this is worse in my opinion. I don't really like, I don't mind cold weather. I just uh, like to dress for it. Let's put it that way. When caught in a winter storm outside, first, find shelter. Try to stay dry and cover all exposed parts of the body. I had a friend went snowmobiling and got lost for like four days. I think he ended up having a couple toes amputated. But, uh... That's what he did. First thing, they tried to stay dry, but didn't work too well. Their snowmobiles, I think, fell in a, in a river. And so they were all wet, and it's amazing they lived. But the first thing they did, they went to find shelter. And they couldn't find any, so they had to build some. If no shelter is available, prepare a lean-to, windbreak, or snow cape for protection from the wind. I believe that's exactly what they did. Build a fire for heat and to attract attention. Place rocks around the fire to absorb and reflect heat. I would have never thought of that, but that's a good idea. All right, congratulations. You have completed this module, or almost completed this module. Remember, you still need to complete that uh, module exam. Congratulations, you have completed this module. Remember to always think ahead, be prepared, be safe, and be happy. Goodbye.